This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time, let it shine. Hey kids! Wait, Tommy! Tommy! Tommy, what, Tommy, what, Tommy! What, 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 what? <laughs> hey, I have a question. Are you ready for school to be over? Yes! yes. Are you yes! ready? Okay, are you ready for summer to start? Yes! Yes! Are you ready? Final question. Are you ready for another amazing, awesome VBS to be happening? Woohoo! Woohoo! Wait. Wait, but how's it gonna work? Every day you tune in to St. Peter either on Facebook or on YouTube, and you'll see our virtual VBS online. I'll be there to welcome you, sing fun songs, Pastor Hayes and Pastor Hintz will be there to lead us through our daily Bible story, and you two are going to be there to help them. Mrs. Eden? Yeah. Have you met Tommy yet? That's one of the new things as well. Tommy, say hi. Hi! Tommy Hello. just came. Tommy just came home from college. I think that's why he was sleeping, wasn't it? Yeah. You're tired, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That's okay. Anyway, but he's going to be here every day to help us with VBS. VBS is one of my favorite summer activities. I can't wait. What's the theme this year, Mrs. Eden? Jesus loves me. Every day, one of the letters in the word loves will tie into that day's Bible story and the craft we're meaning and what it means to us. That's a mystery to me. What could L-O-V-E-N-S stand for? Will we get to do crafts too? Yes, Miss Donna is going to lead us through step by step through the daily Bible craft activity. It's going to be a lot of fun. That'll be fun. But what if the kids at home don't have any crafts and things at their house? Well, when you register, we will set aside a craft kit for you that you can pick up at St. Peter the week before VBS starts. When can kids register? You can register now online through June 7th. Is VBS June 15th to 19th this year? Absolutely, sure is. It will start on June 15th and go through that Friday the 19th, and every morning at 9 a.m., our video will be live. But you can watch it throughout the day, just in case if your family is busy at that time. Oh, that's great, because I usually wake up around lunchtime. You are too funny, Tommy. I'm glad you're home to help us, because I think you'll be waking up around 9 o'clock to help us every day, so I don't think you'll get to sleep in until noon that day. But let's finish our song, and we'll register for VBS whenever we get home. You ready? Where's your light? Where's your light? Ready? All around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Good morning and welcome. The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Peter Lutheran Church in Schaumburg, Illinois. And as this weekend so many things are going on again, it is Memorial Day weekend. And uh, again, we uh, again are thankful for those that have given their lives to sacrifice. And uh, we just appreciate what those people and families have done. We also this past week uh, celebrated the ascension of our Lord on Thursday as uh, he rose into the heavens 40 days after Easter and uh, we look forward to him returning once again as he comes back. We've, we've again ex been excited about that. We look forward to that day and finally today as we gather today in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we know today that we're going to be speaking about a subject about suffering. Suffering and uh, our entitled our title today for our lesson is uh, not if but when, 
And we're going to be looking specifically at 1 Peter and what he has to say about that. Again, knowing that uh, God still loves us so much that even though we suffer, it is for his good will, his good pleasure, but he brings us along in his love as well. So I look forward to spending that time with you as we gather today uh, in worship. So with that being said, I invite you to please stand as we make our beginning today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. As we prepare to worship our Lord today through song, let us consider Psalm 86, verse 10. For you are great and you do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may rely on you. For great is your love towards me, and I will glorify your name forever. You have delivered me from the depths. Today, we have hope because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us praise his name today, for he is great and marvelous. Great and marvelous are all your words, O Lord, King of the ages, we give you praises, who will not fear you, or glorify your name, we bring you all our praise. Great and marvelous are all your words, O Lord, King of the Oh, 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 oh. 
Please join me now as we reconcile with God and others. This joyful Eastertide, away with sin and sorrow, my love, the crucified, has sprung to life this morrow. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia! Even as we glory in the gift of eternal life, in that hope we spend our days in joyful repentance and faith. Let us now confess our sin, the sin that so easily besets us, and receive the full forgiveness our Lord daily provides for us. So together, had, had Christ, Christ who once was slain, now not burst his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain, but now has Christ arisen, 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 but now has Christ arisen. We are your baptized people. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us into our Easter joy. Upon this, your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, announce the grace of God unto all of you, that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for today's readings. Our first reading today comes from Acts chapter 1. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about a hundred and twenty and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested uh, Jesus, for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Akeldama, that is, field of blood. For it was written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today comes from 1 Peter chapter 4 and chapter 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though, sharing, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler. 
Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God, and if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. There ends our second reading. Please stand now for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel reading today is from Jesus' high priestly prayer in John chapter 17. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you, for I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This ends our gospel reading for today, and now we join together as we sing, Yes, I Will.
Would you please pray with me? Oh, good and gracious Heavenly Father, today as we gather together, uh, Lord, we talk about a topic that uh, a lot of people don't want to talk about, and that's uh, suffering. But Heavenly Father, as we hear your word today, that we may be encouraged, that we may know of your love for us, and Lord, that you always have us in your hands. And so today, Father, just bless our time that we may see what truly is right and good, that we may know of your love and share it with everyone we know. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today I do bring grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, we have opportunities in our life when we feel good about standing up for what is right. I mean, right? Don't, don't you have times in your life that you can remember when you stood up for something that, that is right and, and you've gone forth with it and, and you've held fast to it and you feel really good, don't you? But there's one question that has to be asked because of this. Um, and that question is, well, how do you know that you're right? Oh, come on, I know. I know that you're always right, right? Uh, but no, the reality is, is that how do you know that you're really right? What I want you to do is, is just place, place the pride off to the side for just a minute. And today as we go into our messages, our, our time together, how do you really know what's right? And so today as we think about these things, um, this is what we want to do. We want to think about uh, those options, those things in life where we know that we have our own opinion on things. We have our own opinion and we've made our case, we've studied, we, we got all the information that we necessarily need or maybe not, and we've made our opinion. We've already said yes or no to something and this is the way it is. Well, today, through an illustration, I hope to challenge you a little bit about what we're talking about. Um, as we lay the groundwork for looking at First Peter today uh, in that book, I want you to understand something. And so this illustration that we want to use today is the story of Shelley Luther. And uh, no, I don't know if she has any relation to Martin back then, uh, but her name is Shelley Luther. And, and you might have been following this story already. She's the Dallas salon owner who um, really kind of took on the government uh, during this uh, you know, shelter-in-place situation. Um, she's the one who defied the judge's order that she was supposed to cease and desist. And she said, though, in her defense, she said, no, I I've got to do this because I need to put money in my pocket so that I can pay for food for my children. And not only that, but I want to be able to provide opportunity for my workers, my employees, to be able to put food on their table as well. And so she went ahead and opened up her salon, and now she stood before the judge. And the judge, uh, he is going to fine her and also place her in jail for seven days. And as she's standing before him, he says, you know what, I tell you what, if you apologize, what we're going to do is we won't have you go to jail. You probably have to pay the fine still, but, uh, you know, we'll just go ahead and <clears throat> move that along. And, and yes, your salon will still be closed. Well, she said very respectfully and very politely, no, I will not apologize. I need to do this for my family. And Sarah, so there you have it. There you have it, each side. And again, I'm not trying to cause division at home between one another. Um, I'm not trying to cause division with your family or friends that are, are not with you right now. What I'm saying is, is that the question comes down to who's right? See, we can argue that she was the one who was caring for her family and she had to open up her business to be able to do this. Or, or what about for the judge? He's carrying out the law and he needs to make sure that everybody follows the law. And so what did she do? She ended up going to jail for two days. She went for two days and then sure enough, more people got involved with it. Um, some hail her as a hero, others see her as a lawbreaker. And again, that's where the opinion comes in. Well, who's right? And the fact of the matter is, as we get into this, then my question becomes then for you, well, what about you? Have you experienced hatred or hurt? Or has someone done something nasty to you 
for being right. Have that or has that situation happened to you where you've been doing the right thing and those occurrences took place, whether physical or verbal? Have you received that? Well, let me go to one more step further. Have you experienced hatred or hurt or somebody doing something nasty to you for being a Christ follower? In other words, for being a Christian, for following what God has said and speaking out on either certain issues or subjects, for being right, in other words, in God's eyes, but yet really living the life of a Christian. See, some of you out there I've talked to, we've, we've had Bible study time together, we've had uh, individual conversations where you've experienced it and you've shared that with me of what's taking place. And again, I commend you for doing that right thing, for humbly going and speaking the word of truth, the word of God to those who need to hear it. And yet you've received trouble, maybe even punishment for what you've done. But I'm also going to guess for a majority of us out there, maybe we haven't experienced that at all. Oftentimes it's fear. The fear of retaliation or the fear of punishment or the fear of persecution that stops us from going out there. In fact, that's usually sometimes that fear is even worse than the persecution itself. But that natural question that comes up after that then is, well, if we haven't been persecuted, are we failing at being witnesses? Are we failing what God has called us to do or what should we expect? Well, maybe that's an answer of yes and an answer of no. It depends, it depends upon how God has been using us to serve him in his kingdom. But today, as we look at 1 Peter, we take a look at what Peter is saying and he's saying to those believers in, in the um, area of uh, Asia Minor. During this time, he's talking to him about suffering, about persecution. And he says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But what does he say to do? He says in verse 13, But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. See, for Christians, the reality is that our suffering is for now. It's temporal. It's just a little while until we get to that part where either Jesus returns or we die and go to the Lord immediately and then finally on that one day when he does return that we will reveal or be revealed in Christ's glory that as he comes, and he acknowledges and shows that he truly is the king of all. That day we hope for and that day we wait. But until then, Peter talks to them and says, here's the thing. Here's the deal why we continue to wait on this earth. He says, Satan, the devil, the one who is described as the roaring lion, he's seeking to go and devour anybody he can find. He's wanting to go and attack and, and, and go after his prey. But I find it interesting that lions, lions don't really roar when they're hunting. I mean, after all, they want to be quiet. They want to be stealthy. They want to maybe hide and all of a sudden jump out. That's the reality of how they stalk and how they go after their prey. It's only when they're fighting or only when after the kill has been made. They are roaring to let them know that they've done that thing. But today, I want you to think of something. I want you to think of something as um, C.S. Lewis has thought about this. He's pondered about it, and he's written uh, two areas in which Satan actually works in the way that he attacks. So I want you to consider this, uh, something from C.S. Lewis. The devil either fills your life with the demonic. In other words, all those things that are around you going on so that you make him out to be more than he is. In other words, giving him more merits that he's scary and, and that he is, again, something to fear and, and behold. See, our friends in Africa, they have no problem believing this. They have no problem that the devil is real and that he is one through spirits can control and can do things and cause hardship and heartache and problems and issues. 
because they believe that he's real. They believe that he's there. Well, the second thing that C.S. Lewis writes is that, or maybe, or not maybe, or he attacks this way. He hides himself so that you can delude yourself into thinking that there is no devil. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, this is probably how it is for us here in America. We delude ourselves in thinking that there isn't this other being, that there isn't this so-called bad thing out there, this entity that actually lives and wants to see our demise. See, oftentimes, going back up to that fear issue, we walk along our different fellow whatever people, Americans, whomever they might be, and we walk along and we just kind of go with the flow. And the reality is that when we bring the truth of God to really, a nation that doesn't really believe, to people who would not want to live under authority. See, that's when the persecution begins. And so the devil doesn't even worry about us because he's got us right where he wants us to. Let's us continually to go on in our way, in our <laughs> merry way of having a peace that is really kind of false. But that's not what God is saying. In fact, he says, really, through Peter, uh, in that word, that, that we will suffer, that we will be in this, that we will stand up for what is true and right, and we do it in a loving way. And the issue is, it is so important to stand for Christ. It is so important to stand and do the right thing. Here's another story that you might be aware of. There's a, a young man who has been killed uh, his name is Ahmad Aubrey. And uh, as, the, as the, again, uh, notes, the um, lessons, the, the news clippings, the articles, all that kind of stuff, I've, I've combined it, and this is what it came down to. Uh, Ahmad is a black man who was shot dead by two white men, a father and a son. And this is while he was jogging um, outside Brunswick, Georgia, on February the 23rd of this year. And it was kind of quiet for the rest of the nation because it happened in Georgia and it was there, but it wasn't until somebody released the video showing the killing. And it hit the national spotlight of what took place. And so again, just quick background of what's, what's going on is that there is this um, young man who um, had been seen actually in uh, the, um, the residence of this, this residence that was being built. And it was on security camera, but... It was, he was just going in to check it out. And whether or not it was him or not, I guess that's still maybe some, some thought process of what's going on. The reality is, is that um, these two men took it upon themselves to be the justice system. And they went after this man who was jogging in this neighborhood. And the confrontation took place and they shot him. And the reality is that here you have, begin both sides. And the question becomes, who's right Who's right? Were they really protecting? Were they thinking that this was a threat? Was this something that they should have taken in their own hands? Or is it the fact that there's something else? There's something else that's going on. Something more nefarious, more evil, more terrible. And the reality is then you've got then this trial that's going to be coming up. Well, I don't know if you know this or not. But when the funeral took place for Ahmad, there was a note on um, a bouquet of flowers that was sent to the funeral, actually at the place, at the funeral home. And the note, it was anonymous, and it said this, Ahmad, I am so sorry. I should have stopped them. I am so sorry. Now, since then, I have not seen anything else about this story. All I know is that this made the news at one point at one time. And I think to myself, was somebody really out there and, and they knew what was right, but they didn't stand up? I, I hear and I understand that this guilt factor probably for this person is so great that they felt terrible for what maybe could have happened differently. Well, today, as we, again, continue back in our lesson for today, we know today, fortunately, that for Christians, for those who follow Christ, we know that there is evidence of what good and right is. 
We know there's evidence, and it's found in this book called the Bible. Sometimes it's called the Holy Scriptures. Sometimes it's just simply called God's Word. And it is said for us through, especially this chapter then today, that we should be suffering for Christ. We should be suffering for those things that are being done the right way. We should stand for Christ knowing that it might cause trouble or hardship for us temporarily. But for the Christ-like thing, whether it's sacrificing, whether it's loving, whether it's being a people of peace, whether we're doing the right thing, this is what we've been called to do. This is who we are as people who follow Christ. See, in our lives, you and I deal with authority in the negative sense. We see authority as if we do something wrong, there's going to be something where there's going to be a fine. There's going to be jail time. There's going to be those things that are levied against us because we've broken down and not done the right thing. But Jesus... Jesus does something totally different because Jesus is the authority that brings life and he brings love. He doesn't bring the punishment because we know we've already done bad things or we know bad things happen, but now he's saying, come suffer with me. I've already suffered for you on the cross. I've given my life so that you might live. Now come and share in those sufferings for I will bring you along. And here's the sweet thing of this whole aspect. Here's the sweet deal. When you know this, when you finally understand what's taking place and that Jesus' authority is there and that we suffer with him, do you realize that we understand truly what is right? And it's not a puffed up, I know that I'm right and I'm going to declare it to everybody. No, it's to know that right is is done by God through his son, Jesus Christ. And now we don't come up with pride or, or puffed up chest. No, we come with humility. We come with humility and we love our neighbor and we continually to share with him whether they agree with it or not. That's, again, the work of the Holy Spirit that's going to work on them. But we continue to do what we've been called to do and that's to bring the love of Christ, the author of life. And here's what happens. So when we forgive each other, when baptisms are taking place, when communion is being received by God's people, the true body, the true blood, along with, in, and under the bread and wine, when God's healing, when God's comfort is given, when God's preaching, when God's teaching is applied, guess what happens? The beast is held at bay. The lion, or the devil as he is known, is held captive. Not some make-believe creature, but the real deal. And that causes him to roar, and it causes him to get angry that God is continually calling his people, and he's bringing his flock. He is bringing his people as he gathers them together. And the devil just doesn't know what to do. He's trying to find a way to devour and seek, but he can't because he doesn't have power over God. And he certainly does not have power over you. And so think about this. That note that was there. Ahmad, I am so sorry. I should have stopped him. I am so sorry. You know, you and I can imagine how important it was for that person, that he should have stood up, or she, I guess, that whoever that person was, they should have stood up and done what was right. It could have made the difference in one man's life. It it could have made the difference in in the father and the son who who did the act. It could have made the difference in the community. We'll never know. But now, now I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine how right it is to stand up for Jesus Christ, that his glory would be shown and others might know the gift of eternal life. See, we know because God is right, because Jesus is right, the Holy Spirit is right. Our God is right, and this is what he's done. 
we know that it does make a difference in the eternity of all people who receive Christ as Savior. We know for a fact it will make a difference because God has said so. And that's where we have our hope. That's where we hold on to the truth this day. And so in closing, we look at what Peter says as he says, if you follow these things, as you continue to go through life, doing these things and suffering for God, knowing that right and good is on his side, what he's doing. Did you see what will happen at the end? Those comforting words that he gives, it says the God of all grace, this is what he's going to do. He will himself restore you. He will confirm you. He will strengthen you and he will establish you. My dear friends, it's not if the suffering will come. It's not if the persecution will come. It's when it will come. And because of those comforting words, because of that closing, we know that we are secure in Christ forever. We know that we are secure. What can man do to us? What can the authorities who go against us who don't want to follow the authority of God, what can they do? The reality is, is that we, we know what's right, and his name is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So today, I wish you God's encouragement, his blessing upon you as you go forth in the name of the Lord to serve him and to know truly that he loves you so much. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Now please stand and join with me as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we continue to worship our Lord with the collection of your tithes and offerings. <laughs> Please stand and join me in the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray. Father in heaven, God of all grace, we thank you that you are our assurance in our times of trial. We know that in this life, uh, suffering can not only can, but will come our way. It's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would help us stand strong in the assurance that we have through faith in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so today, Lord, as we pray, we want to lift up all of our 
decision makers, elected leaders and judges and the like, whether it be at the federal level, all the way to our local communities, we just pray that your spirit would guide and direct them because the decisions they are making carry a lot of weight. And I'm certain it's, it's quite a challenge, especially with all the information flying everywhere. Just bless them with your spirit, that your spirit would guide and direct them and decisions that are made would be to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we want to pray for all who serve in this time, especially with Memorial Day uh, coming just tomorrow. We remember all who have served this country and given their lives in service so that we might uh, be able to enjoy the very freedoms that we have right now to worship. And so bless all of those who grieve the loss of their loved ones that have served this country and given their lives in such a manner. We also pray for those who are serving in the armed forces right now that you would guard and protect them. And we lift up to you today especially Jake Meese and John Sullivan. Uh, plant a hedge of protection around them, Lord. Guard and protect as well all who serve in this country in varied capacities. Yes, for all those in the medical field and, and by name Victoria Johnson as well. Uh, we, we pray though for all who are serving, whether they're first responders or they work in in some kind of business, just thank you for everyone who's putting themselves out there to bless and benefit others in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also want to pray for those who grieve this day, and we uh, lift up the family of Leroy Deering, uh, who was a member here, confirmed here at St. Peter, and uh, a man of faith. And so we just pray, Lord, that as Leroy passed, that his family would be comforted by the fact that he walked in faith of Jesus, and in that faith he has the promise of life, eternal life with you, and he lives now in your glory. So bless them with that assurance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For um, uh, our members and friends that are in need of your healing touch, we lift up by name Sue Wins, Linda Foitzenreuter, Elizabeth Adeus, Frank Donahue, Debbie Bodnar, Christine Leaf, Karen Mueller, Jean Newman, Jean DeFalco, John Schrader, Pastor Eric Tricky, uh, Toya, Jody, many members of the Kabaj family, Carol Hansen, Sue and Rich Chiavari, Ching Lee Park, and Clark and Jenna. And Lord, you know each one of these people's needs. Some are nearing the end of this life. Others are just in need of your touch, whether it be physical or emotional or relational healing, whatever it might be. We pray, Lord, that you would be their presence, their strength, their comfort in the midst of this time of trial. We might say this time of suffering. Bless them, Lord. And if it be your will, bless them with healing as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we want to celebrate. We want to celebrate the birthdays that we have both this past week and the week coming up for Nate Krause, whose uh, birthday was this past week, uh, and for Adam Collier, whose birthday will be this coming week. We just pray for both these men that they would continue to grow in faith and stature and recognize the many blessings that you have poured upon them, not only this day, but every day hereafter as well, as they walk in Jesus. So, Lord, we commend all of these prayers, trusting in your grace given us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And now we pray together our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now hear these words of blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's children say, Amen.
I've got just a few announcements for you. Uh, it's been a, a week or two since, well, a couple of weeks since I reminded you that our clearinghouse for all information here at St. Peter is located on our website at stpeterlcms.org. You can find their Bible studies, devotions, worship services, and a plethora of information about things that are going on here. We also want to uh, uh, just express a word of thanksgiving. I want to say thank you to the response that this congregation has given in so many and varied ways. I've always said this church cares uh, unbelievably. And so I want to thank you very pointedly for your response. As I said, it's time to restock our food pantry and I didn't see that much food coming in the door. I was a little concerned, and then I go in the food pantry the other day, and you can see the stock building and building and building, and it's a thing of beauty. And so I want to encourage you to continue uh, to donate and, and bless the ministry of the food pantry as we desire to reopen it on June the 1st, and hopefully we can do so. And then finally, with tomorrow being Memorial Day, I, I just want to invite you, come, Come to our cemetery, St. Peter Lutheran Church in Schaumburg, Illinois. Come to our cemetery, and the graves of the veterans will all be marked. They may be marked by flags. We're waiting on them to come in, and they may come in and be plant, uh, marked by flags. At the very least, they'll be marked by the stakes that we use for wreaths, and uh, you can journey through the cemetery and in your own way give thanks to those who have served this country. So with that, I pray God's blessings on your week ahead. I pray that suffering's not in your path, but if it is, we do so with the assurance that we're safe in the care of uh, our Lord and we walk securely through faith in Jesus Christ. May that give you an assurance in the days ahead. So now we'll close with our closing song.
Thank you.